Hello and welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In the last video, we took a look at Clip Studio Paint EX's extract line function, as well as a Clip Studio Paint Pro alternative, and learned how to use them to create line art out of other materials. In today's video, we'll go over some uses for these functions. Links to additional tutorials, as well as anything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. Now that we've covered the basics of the extract line function and artistic filters, what are some of the ways to use them? My favorite use for the extract line function is with 3D models. If you have a background or item model you'd like to reference for your comic, simply use extract line while the 3D layer is selected. I recommend checking the vector layer setting when working with backgrounds, as that will allow you to adjust the brush type and reposition the line art using the object tool later on. One setting that works incredibly well for backgrounds is depth. Simply put, this setting will take distance into account when rendering a 3D model into line art. For example, as a default I set my graph so that objects closer to the reader have a thicker line art, while those in the distance have thinner line art. This is a really easy way to convey depth in your artwork, and helps items stand out more from each other. To make the lines look as hand-drawn as possible, I personally like to disable the texture settings and leave my objects empty inside. After I press OK, I can then go in and manually draw some texture back in myself if the item needs it. Since we set it to create a vector layer, the line art we created is fully customizable when using the object tool. Go to the tool property panel to find a list of adjustments you can make. To really make this line art seamless with the rest of my comic, I like to go to the brush shape drop down and choose the custom line art brush setting I made for my series. Now the line art will match the rest of my art style. This step is really crucial in my opinion for making the extracted line art feel as natural to the rest of the page as possible. The extract line function can also be used with photos and images. For maximum potential, I recommend using an image with high contrast. If yours doesn't, you can use adjustment layers to tweak the colors until there's a good range of values. For this example, here's a photo I took of some mushrooms outside. After pressing the convert button, I like to make sure the black fill button is checked. That'll fill in darker areas and give a better sense of contrast to the line art and tones. For simplified colors, check the posterization box under Tone Work and adjust the handles on the color bar until you get a result you like. Now if I wanted to color this, I would just create a new layer between the fill layer and the first tone layer and add whatever colors I like there. If you want to color your tone layers, you can either rasterize them, or change the layer color under the Layer Property panel. Once you've mastered this function, you'll quickly see how useful it can be for your webcomic project. One of my favorite uses is for drawing background characters. Just insert and pose some Clip Studio Paint human models into your background, then use Extract Line to create line art from them. And just like that, you have an instant crowd ready to use. This also works for models of trees when you're drawing a forest, or skyscrapers for a city. Finally, if you have a more complex 3D model that can't be loaded into Clip Studio Paint, for example, a large SketchUp file, you can simply take a screenshot of your model at an angle you need and then bring that screenshot into Clip Studio Paint for line extraction the way you might with a photo. Conveniently, SketchUp has its own style settings that add a line art-like filter over 3D models for you, so using that feature before taking your screenshots can help make a clearer visual for Clip Studio Paint's extract line function. In this instance, I recommend you convert your line art layer to a vector layer after extracting the line art, so you can switch the brush style to match your work better. If any areas of line art feel too thick or thin, they can be manually tweaked with the object tool, or adjusted more quickly with the correct line tool. Those are the basics for how I use Clip Studio Paint EX's Extract Line function for creating line art and tones for my webcomics. Check the description below for my social media links and links to more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.